I'm here with my 22-year-old sister, Victoria, and we're going to talk about the recent ruling. And in the eyes of the world, probably 99% of people your age are so upset that this constitutional right has been taken away, but we're gonna address that in some of the comments. All right, this one was the craziest one I saw. Oh, yeah. A mom with her kids saying, don't force this on anyone. First of all, this woman's just here with her two adorable little children. And then you read the sign and you're like, wait, did I just read this right? She's saying that, you know, you shouldn't force this on anyone as if, as if it's a burden. Cause normally you force bad things on people. You don't really force people to, I don't know, eat ice cream or do things they love. It's kind of like, it's voluntary. Um, and it's fun and it's, uh, it's definitely not bringing your two little kids to a rally and saying to everyone that you shouldn't force people to have kids, have the most um, joy-filled experience that you'll probably ever have in your life. As a father of three, I mean, you seem to have a lot of, you have seen have so much joy with Dominic, Michael, and Maria. And I, I mean, I couldn't imagine you walking around with a sign saying that like, they're a burden or anyone forced me to do this or that they make your life any less, but that they amplify it in the best way. Yeah. Dominic and Michael are twins. They're three. They are extremely challenging to raise, but they're so cute. I mean, every single night we go to bed and we are exhausted. We are so tired from caring for them. You know, Amory more than myself, right? But what does she realize is that like what she's doing is like creating the next generation. So yeah, it's, it's exhausting. And I'm sure there are times that people are like, oh my gosh, like how I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. But to basically say, oh, well, they're just such a nuisance, such a burden. I wouldn't want anyone else to have kids. I mean, we hear it all the time. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh yeah, I had two and I'm like done, you know, mm -hmm. like, and it's just, it's such a, it's such a sad reality that we have come to like the concept that like my comfort and pleasure is like more important than creating a legacy through children. I'm going to be dead in like however many years, right? And they're going to be like what continues. Mm -hmm. So while I sacrificed and humbled myself and was not first in so many ways, that will allow them to grow in virtue and raise future awesome kids. But if you like hate your kids and they know that they hate you, are they going to have kids? Are they like, how will they raise their kids? It's just like, it's a never ending cycle. And it's, it's really crazy. We went to our uh, family doctor and he was like, Dominic and Michael are really happy. We're like, thank you. And he's like, you know why? Because you are. He's like, I've been doing this for like 25 years and I see it. I see the grandparents and they're, you know, sad and like just not joyful. Mm -hmm. And then that's what happens to their kids. And, mm -hmm. you know, so this, this lady, for instance, like what message will that lead to for her kids? Yeah, you know, exactly. And Anne-Marie said something today I thought was great. She said she's, you know, the boys are running around. She's got Maria. Um, in her arm, she's feeding her, she's burping her. And she said, she looks at Maria and she's like, Maria, maybe one day you'll take care of me when I'm older or something like that. And it's, it's not, it's not anything that Maria, if she was old enough to talk or, you know, to understand it, that she would say, Oh mom, I can't believe you're forcing me to like take care of you or like mm -hmm. put up with you. It's just, Anne Marie and Ray are being parents out of love and, uh, doing the best they can to raise their children. And they're hoping that maybe one day they'll return the favor. Um, but I think a lot of our generation and a lot of people mm. nowadays are growing up thinking that I don't have to do that. Like, I don't, I don't want to sacrifice. I don't want to put the other person first. Uh, so, and sadly, a lot of, it's not just the kids that are saying that, but it's the parents. And in this case, it's the parent talking about her kids saying, this is really hard. Mm. Like either one, I don't want to do it or two, it's too much for anyone to handle. So you should not be forced into this crazy, awful situation, even though it's not. You know, that's such a great point because I met Anne-Marie through my grandparents and I would not have had the relationship with my grandparents if my mom had not taken care of them as they were dying. Mm. Yeah. So like, I would not be here without that. And it's just like so amazing how like that totally transformed my life, you know? And uh, gosh, like, can you imagine that? Like oh how life would have been different? Yeah, no, I remember summers, we'd go down to Florida and I'm a, I don't know, 15, 16 year old girl, my friends are going to the beach and I'm going to take care of my grandma. And I thought, oh, this is boring. But I remember mom saying, you know, you're receiving special graces, you're receiving special graces. 
And I think in that moment when you're just in that selfish mindset, you're just like, I don't really care. You know, I want to do what I want to do. Um, but then you look back and you're like, that really developed my character so much. That really made me um, more mature than my friends. That really made me close to the family. That really mm. uh, made you more sacrificial. Our family just, you know, uh, bonded together more. So it's it's those little things that you can't really see the sacrifice. You can't really see the fruits coming from the sacrifice um, until you look back and you realize, wow, my life is... Um, way better than I thought it would be. And it's because I took this path of heroism instead of selfishness. Getting out of college and, uh, I don't know, maybe being a woman and being a little emotional myself, um, <laughs> I, I do feel for the women who are, uh, who are suffering and who, who think this is their only option. Um, and I would say to you that your feelings are valid, um, but your actions are going to make the difference. Mm -hmm. So, um, Take your hurt, take your sadness to the right people, the people that you trust, um, your boyfriends, your families. If you're, yeah, if you're the men, step it up. Um, your feelings of, I, I wanted to do this in life, but maybe I won't be as successful as I thought I was going to be because now I have to take care of a child. And now, you know, um, this burden, burden will actually be the biggest blessing. So um, don't confuse your feelings with uh, the actions, but mm. definitely choose wisely and know that uh it's it's definitely more rewarding and if you are listening to this and uh you aren't pregnant or anything like that be chaste right save sex for marriage i did it it was my wife and i both did it it was totally worth it victoria's doing it and it's like i can only imagine like how different my life would be if I had, you know, gotten a girl pregnant while I was in college or something like that, mm -hmm. it would be totally different, right? But that's where the choice, that is where the choice really is. Because there were so many times, right, that I could have chosen that, but I didn't choose it because I, I was saying no to a greater yes. Amory, my wife taught me that, and it's, it's so true. But in all of these comments and what we've seen, essentially it all comes down to sex. And there's like the sex strike, and it's like all this stuff, like, what is your perspective on all that? Just getting out of college and, you know, seeing how all that is. Yeah, I think uh, getting out of college, college is a time where a lot of people find themselves, explore, uh, test out their sexuality. Um, and, you know, it, it can be tempting, but a lot of friends that I've seen who have chosen that lifestyle have not ended up happier, but have just been grasping for uh, those pleasures that they thought would make them happy. And the real friends that are happy are the ones that are the sacrificial ones, the ones that are pursuing good relationships, um, that have great relationships with their families, um, and who are rising to the occasion. And I think the people who are chasing uh, sex and selfishness are wondering what will fulfill them. Trying to say sex for marriage, that's the route that you've chosen? Yes. Why? Yes because it's the happiest route. <laughs> um, <laughs> so so you, you bring up happiness, right? Yeah. So many people will be like, oh, you're 22 and young. Like, why would you not want to do that? Like, Well, I mean, of course the temptation is there. <laughs> I'm not saying the temptation is not there. I'm human. Um, but it's, it's something so beautiful and so sacred that you know you want to keep it till marriage. And if you, um, it's, it's not, it's not a, hard and fast rule that if you if you messed up um, in your past that you're disqualified um, from happiness in any way mm -hmm. but uh, that's that's a great point yeah 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 no that's huge and I think like well I guess the, the question I would have for you and everyone listening here's your response is like are you so unhappy because you have not had sex oh no the opposite um I, my boyfriend and I have been dating for a little over a year and we're so happy. We are so happy that in times of temptation, we can pray together, we can talk about it. Um, and that's where the true love kicks in mm. because anyone could um, act on feelings and emotions and just kind of take from the other person. But it's in that sacrament of marriage where you're giving yourself freely, knowing that they're not gonna leave the next day or, um, they're not just gonna they're not just gonna use you where you really feel like I'm loving them as best as possible and they're loving me as best as possible so no if anything it's strengthened our love it's strengthened mm. our relationship um, and I, I mean I couldn't be happier that's awesome 
it's so funny because like here I am like from the the male perspective and like obviously a little older, a little older than you Victoria but like I've done what I can to like order my life properly and like save sex for marriage and like I've seen the fruits in it now having kids and all that stuff so as I said earlier one day I'm gonna be dead and my kids are gonna be carrying on my legacy this is this is a, a such an important element <laughs> I know I mean it's <laughs> I true so. you have a 100 percent chance of dying it's going to happen it's, it's going to happen. Yeah. So uh, there's like, there's nothing more that I think people rejoice in and their deathbed than their children and the legacy to leave them behind, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and that's why this is such an important issue that impacts generations, you know? So I'm so grateful that, you know, I've been able to like grapple with this issue and, and find the truth and see it applied in my life. You know, um, it's not, just something that I, you know, have read up on, but I actually see the in impact of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like Victoria said, my mom has helped mothers choose life and helped them, you know, after that, you could see the video up here, here, um, that my mom did with my wife on that. And uh, it just shows that th there's so much joy that comes from life. It's much greater than anything that you could ever imagine mm -hmm. than advancing your career uh, or anything like that. So I think with this decision, a lot of women have felt uh, violated. A lot of women have felt like their rights and privileges have been taken away from them and that the responsibility is all on them. Um, but sex is a two-way street <laughs> and men need to step it up. This is where uh, the women I think are feeling frustrated and angry because it's like, how can I do this by myself? How can I do this by myself? Well, it's not supposed to be by yourself. You're supposed to have that support of uh, your husband or boyfriend or um, Maybe it just it was just a one night stand and it's like, oh my gosh, you're freaking out, you're worried. Um, but it really is. It's supposed to be a partnership. It's supposed to uh, not just fall all in, all on the women's responsibility. So I do feel sad. I do feel sad for women who are uh, feeling so enraged about it because they have been abandoned by men. Yes, so men, step it up. Stop being cowards and actually love the women in your lives. you know um, it's it, it all comes down to like this concept like so, Lila Rose said it really well. She just put out a video. I'll link it like up here, here, wherever it is. And she said, we need uh, sex to be within marriage where there's this lifelong commitment, like you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And um, where like the men are not gonna bail, you know? Mm -hmm. There's there's so many, like this is all correlated. And I don't think people realize that there's so much frustration and anger because men have dropped the ball. I want to look at a couple of the responses. One that's been really popular is our government is bold enough to force you to have a kid but too weak to ensure they make it to recess alive. I got a lot of thoughts about that one. All right, go ahead. <laughs> First, to dissect a little part, um, our government is bold enough to force you to have a kid. First of all, I mean, the government isn't forcing people to have kids. It's that you're in this circumstance and maybe it feels like it's a forced situation and this is your only decision and uh, you're like you're being held against your will and if that's the case uh, I'm sorry I'm sorry you feel like that um, I'm sorry that you didn't have the support that you needed there are so many resources um, it's not that the government is forcing you to do this it's that uh, people are waking up and realizing that this is a baby that this life is uh, just as important um, as any other life uh, and that in response to that, I think there are there are many resources that go uh, unused. Um, people are unaware of it. People are unaware of pregnancy centers, um, just people in their local church that would help them if they just reached out. Uh, so I I think someone who writes something like that is just full full of their full of a lot of anger, frustration, um, and I can't say I agree with anything on that um with I mean in in terms of like getting children getting to recess alive the school shootings have been uh I mean terrible just mm -hmm. a big tragedy in the news um but I mean people are as, taking steps as someone that. that has uh you know twin three-year-olds when that happened I was like oh my gosh oh, so sad yeah um uh, this is terrible but I think an important notice there have been many years that there was a democrat in the white house and they had a majority in the house and senate and yet the school shootings still happen. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we need to blame this on either side, right? Mm -hmm. Both have failed in protecting kids yeah. 
for that. So yeah. it's not it's not a oh okay you know conservatives you care about babies but you're not gonna you know protect them. Mm -hmm. Democrats you had the chance but nothing was done there. You know, it's not mm -hmm. like school shootings were not happening. It's just the right actions were not taken. I'm not sure why, yeah. but um, yeah. that is definitely something that I think needs to be addressed. So there is there is like a little bit of truth in these comments, you know? It's not like these are totally without any merit, you know? But like you said, school shootings would still happen um, even if guns were illegal. People would find a way to get to it. So the guns aren't the problem. It's the people behind the guns. It's the people that have mental health issues that no one's checked up on. It's the parents that don't have a relationship with their child. Um, that's fatherhood, the, that's, right? Fatherhood, yeah. All these, all these shooters do not have a father. So that's the men, issue. Step it up. Stop being cowards. But with abortion, that is the problem that's killing the babies. Mm -hmm. It's not the gun. It's the person writing that is saying, "Get rid of the guns, then we'll have free." I mean, then we'll have you know safe, the, school. safe schools and everything. But this, in this case, if you get rid of the abortion, yes, we will have more babies alive. We will yeah. have. You need to check out Trent Horn. He has three master's degrees, one in theology, one in philosophy, and one in bioethics. So definitely a well-read guy. But he said, the analogies are terrible. Abortion is an act. An AR-15 is a tool. And by AR-15, he means the weapon, right? The comparison should be act to act, aborting children and shooting innocent people, or tool to tool, suction machine and AR-15s. We outlaw evil acts, but not necessarily tools that have legal purposes. We do outlaw some tools that have legal purposes like automatic weapons, AKA machine guns, but that's completely different from the gravely evil acts of violence against innocent people. And that was in response to someone saying, I will never forget that abortions were banned before AR-15s. And ironically, they're saying, the government forces us to have a child, but they can't protect our child. And they're talking, so basically saying, if our government can't protect our children, we might as well just kill our children, mm. which is, that's the sad truth wow, behind that's, it. That's, that's profound, huh? This one, which I've seen everywhere, and you've heard it before. Okay, those that celebrated on Friday, why don't you sign up to be a foster parent to the 400,000 people in the foster care system? Mm -hmm. Great recommendation there. Mm -hmm. Actually, this past Sunday at, uh, not the church that I go to, but uh, Katie's church, mm -hmm. their priest preached on being open to adoption and fostering. So. This is being said in pulpits throughout the country, and I think it's something that, you know, Christians especially should be open to. So I totally agree there. But just because people aren't doing it doesn't mean we should kill these babies. Another important part is why is the foster system so large? Is because, mm -hmm. like I said before, men were not stepping up, right? I can guarantee that a lot of the people in the foster care systems didn't have a father, or the father was abusive or something like that. Men need to grow in virtue. A popular comment on Twitter was forced birth in a country that doesn't have mandatory maternity leave or universal health care. All right, like I said before, a lot of these things have merit in them. There should be maternity leave and paternity leave, you know, for the fathers out there, because mm -hmm. I can't tell you, I am so blessed for the company. They gave me six weeks of paid paternity, and that was huge, especially, of course, when Amory had the twins, that was I mean, that was a super intense time. Um, I was actually, someone was joking, they're like, since you have twins, could you ask for like 12 weeks? Because it was like <laughs> two days. But that, that never ended up happening. But it was so critical because Amory, my wife, was just like, just trying to survive, right? So I was here to help in every way that I could. When we had Maria, our third child, um, I, I, I was literally like full-time dad and mom because she was just trying to recover. I was like, keeping the house together, keeping them entertained so they wouldn't become jealous because they miss mommy time, you know? Um, so this is very important. And I've actually been really surprised. I looked into the uh, maternity and paternity options at like these companies that do offer like the $4,000 credit to get abortions. And they actually have really good plans. So, you know, kudos to those companies. Mm -hmm. Obviously I'm not a fan of that, that thing, but at least they're offering like some of them 20 weeks of paid maternity or paternity leave, you know, for the husband. Uh -huh. The universal health care thing, you know, people have said, oh, well, if it was truly all about babies, then you'd be able to deliver your baby for free. There'd be no cost, you know, child care, all these things. And that like creates a mentality that of course is heavily debated with bureaucracy and like 
How are we going to like, is the state going to pay for all of these things? You know, mm -hmm. that is a, a very, you know, long road to go down. But just because we're like, oh, you can't kill your baby doesn't mean you have to provide every single thing for that baby. You know, yeah. I mean, how did, how did thousands of years of people do it beforehand? Um, our mom helped a mom who has helped several moms who have been single parents. Um, honestly, it's, you know, it's, it's weird being 22 and thinking, gosh, how do I manage my money? Well, like, I don't know how to do this. I can't even imagine having two kids or having three kids or, yeah. but, and by myself. Um, but you know, these women are doing it and it's with the help of others, the support of others, prayer, you know, God's putting the right people in everyone's lives. Um, but yeah, I think it's the, uh, the scared, mm. uh, yeah. inside of people and realizing uh or at least thinking that if i if i ask this person at church they're gonna get mad at me or if i um tell my parents then they're gonna disown me um you know that's a huge point and that's obviously we're christian so we're, we're promoting going to church of course but i cannot tell you how huge our church was you know with this past delivery i mean we had for several weeks every single night a meal from you know, someone in our uh, parish. It was awesome. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And every, I mean, you, you were at church this past Sunday, it was packed, all these young kids. Uh, and, and there's like more babies coming all the time. And it's, it's really amazing. Cause like someone will have a kid and they're like, all right, meal train, you know? Yeah. And it's just really incredible to see that. And maybe that's why we're in this area because people are leaving faith and they don't have this strong group of, you know, more than like, you know, five or so people mm -hmm. that, that they can turn to, you know, because right. you can't be in a, you know, a small friend group and people not get burnt out, you know, mm -hmm. so when you have this large parish and, you know, yeah, did I know all these people intimately? No, you know, but mm -hmm. they're, they're like, everyone's helping out. Yeah, and it's, so. you know, it's, it's chaos, but it's fun. And at least, at least there are all these little lives running around and it's uh, more souls to bring to heaven. Indeed. One tweet that I saw was, our Christian religion is being co-opted for the sake of power and control over our culture, where Jesus chose to save us by his grace and mercy. Christianity is being used to coerce and control people into conformity. This is what it looks like to take Christ's name in vain. It sounds like they're basically saying that we're like, the pro-life side is being unmerciful to the pro-choice side by s telling them to have their babies and that God would never do that. Like God would never force anything. And so we're being the fake Christians. It, I mean, that's, that's what it sounds like. And this, I, I, it's very dangerous when like Jesus, there, there are various forms of Jesus, right? Like, oh, Jesus was merciful. He was compassionate, mm -hmm. right? But what did he do? You know, he ate with tax collectors and sinners. Yeah. But yes, what did he do? What did he do at the end? He said, "Sin no more." We have to change our lives as those in the scriptures did. If we're just Christian, we go to church and we can do whatever we want. Then what is the point? There's no reason to do uh, the right thing. It's just mm. you could you could you could really do whatever you want. And um, it brings up this this key element, right? Which is okay. So. We have the Bible and people debate back and forth over it. But a very important thing that a lot of Christians don't factor in is the first Christians. What did they do? How did they live? They were closer to Jesus than we were. They literally lived with people who lived with Jesus, right? They lived with the apostles or were taught by the apostles. So in the Didache, which was written 70 AD, the oldest known Christian teaching, it said there are two ways, one of life and one of death. You shall not murder a child by abortion or kill a newborn infant. I'm going to trust this document written 8070 over this pastor. One that I wanted to mention is from Abby Johnson. This one was popular. The treatment of an ectopic pregnancy is abortion. The treatment of a, spec a septic uterus is abortion. The treatment for a miscarriage that your body won't release is abortion. If you can't get those abortions, you die you die. Abby Johnson said false. And then she went on further. So you can, you can see her full comment below, but I think this is an important thing is what's going to happen is all these lies are going to be brought forth, you know, 
I mean, even Joe Burrow like posted something today where he's like, you know, I'm not about murdering babies, but I'm about this person who went through this, this person who went through this. And these are all like the small cases that of course are tragic. What, what I've seen in like everything is like, the, they always say like the devil's in the details, right? Mm. It's like, just because there's this one small case, you know, the 1% doesn't mean that the 99% is okay. Mm. You know, yeah. um, even at work, every solution, like imagine there's not a single process out there that addresses every single issue. There's always small things that slip through the cracks. And that's where we like have to do it the best that we can to address the big problem and the smaller solutions can be addressed at the local level, you mm-hmm. know? So that's where, you know, I hope that discussion will continue yeah. um, because it's, uh, I mean, this is like, this is not a like super straightforward, easy solution, yeah. right? A lot yeah. of these are very challenge or not a lot of these, but like there are instances that are very challenging. Um, and, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are tied up saying, oh, well, in the cases of rape and stuff, like this should be okay, you know? And that's that's where like, hopefully the conversation will evolve. Yeah. Um, but that I don't think has been addressed and like everyone's like, Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm on it for that. So I, yeah. I totally support the the choice, you know? Yeah. And even in, even in terms of rape, I mean, that's never, obviously it's, it's terrible. Um, but the child should never die for the sins of the father. Um, and people, women who have written books or, um, posted YouTube videos or I, I follow a lot of women who um, have had a lot of uh, pregnancy stories where it's been unwanted or um, rape or something like that and a lot of times people think that when they have the baby that it'll just be a constant reminder of the person who raped them and um, unfortunately that does happen uh, a lot of times it's like this is the bundle of joy that saved me from that you know I mm. could have I could have Uh, aborted this child and just like had death on my mind my entire life but instead I chose um, the correct path um, and I righted that wrong um, by giving this baby life and uh, either gave them up for adoption or raised them myself Um, so yeah even in those cases of rape there's there's still there's still hope even though it's uh, a, a terrible circumstance this reversal is very important because it opens the band-aid that we had, that we said sex is all about pleasure. That's all that matters, right? Mm-hmm. And that further feeds into like the rape culture, right? Like you can say the hookup culture, whatever you want, the sexual, it's all like essentially, you know, people can say it wasn't consensual and all this stuff. Like it, it takes the like purpose of sex out of it, right? And this, this starts with contraception, as I said before. We need to have sex within marriage. We need to be open to life. Mm-hmm. We are not the author of life. Mm-hmm. If we create a culture that like sees the beauty in the other, right? And like thanks God for that beauty versus wanting to use it, right? That will dramatically impact that. And and bring these cases even lower and lower. I mean, I cannot like the the, the people out there that like abuse their cousins, their children. I mean, what in the world? These people need to be disciplined, like to the highest. This, degree. this is just like pure evil. I mean, how could you do that? And and like it's it's interesting because even within the church, like the Catholic Church has not done an amazing job with all the abuse and stuff like that. I'm the first one to admit it, and mm-hmm. it is extremely disappointing. The most disappointing thing about being Catholic is that this stuff has not been totally out, out uprooted. Mm-hmm. And um, what what can I do to impact that? I can raise holy children, you know, mm-hmm. and um, do what I can to like go to good parishes and build up communities and stuff like that. The answer isn't just like, oh, let's totally avoid it, right? It's like, how can we make a difference? And this is like a first step. And I'm so glad that the court had the courage to say, this is not a constitutional right. Because first mm-hmm. of all, it's not found anywhere in the constitution. There are people that are, you know, support abortion that were like, yes, Roe was terribly decided in the mm-hmm. beginning. So um, it's great to hear. We're uh, one and two of seven kids and it's, you know, it, it can be chaotic, but it's a fun household and wouldn't trade it for anything. It's, uh, it's the best. That it's the is best for blessing. sure. Our, our youngest sister is 11. Yeah. She is so cute. She's awesome. She oh my gosh. Just... Dominic and Michael love her. They, I asked them who their best friend was. And both separately, they said, Tina. 
And Aww. it was just like, oh my gosh, like this is so cool, you know. But my mom, yeah. seventh kid, people were like, oh, do you know what causes that? You know, like, yeah, yeah. So many people could have been like, oh, six kids too much. I'm just going to abort the seventh. But what a blessing that has been. I mean, unbelievable blessing. And she, you can see videos, I'll put them up here of her mm -hmm. uh, that we've done together. But she is just so amazing. And life is such a gift. And I'm so thankful for it. So thanks for joining me. Yes, thanks Hope for Hope you all enjoyed me. it. Please like and share this video and comment below. Have a blessed day. And, and God, God loves love you. you.